Guys, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Eric has told us already that if we get to 100,000 subscribers, he will take the day off and go to the orthodontist and finally get his teeth fixed, which is great because right now he's using a trailer hitch to pick in between his front teeth. So what are we doing today? Well, first off, we're freezing. Um, it is definitely cold today. Um, but we have a customer picking up this brand new Apex 194. Um, this is a BHS. Now, one of the things that he requested was that we have a dewinterized, so when he gets here, we can play with everything and he can see that it all functions. And I said, I got a great idea. If you don't mind, I'm gonna videotape it because I've had a number of responses of people wanting to see, not just hear, but see how we dewinterize a camera. So that's what we're gonna accomplish today. Um, that's the first thing I'm going to do, and then I'm going to re-winterize this Apex 194. Why? Because I haven't done an Apex winterizing video yet. So, let's start with that. Um, first thing I've done is I've connected a line of fresh water to the camper. So, I will show you how I do it. Um, I'll show you the, the way that I think is best, and then I'll tell you the way that uh, uh, other people will do it. So. Well, we'll wait for that. That's Karen, she will be nice to her. All right, so as you can see, we do have our water hooked up here. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do on this particular model, the low point drains are right here. This is the way I like to start my dewinterization process. Um, this is a little bit different. Some people do like to use the sink faucets. I prefer to do it right here. Um, A, because it's just, draining all the water out a little bit quicker, I get an initial run of that antifreeze out of here. So that helps with my process later. It saves me a little bit of time inside and it doesn't fill up my holding tanks as much because not everybody has the ability to dump 15 feet from, when they're, from where they're winterizing. So I like to try to get this stuff started first. There should be two low point drains one for hot, one for cold. Sorry, I uh, keep looking away from the camera, guys. I hope the auto comes out all right. Um, I'm trying to keep my hands as dry as possible today. It is frigid. All right, I'm gonna get this drained and then I'll show you the next step. And this Apex 194 is really nice because our next step is right here. We're gonna go to this outside shower. We're gonna try to get as much of this antifreeze out as possible again here, We're trying to clear this line. So I do one valve at a time so I know we're good. So I still got a little residue there. We're gonna keep on flowing that. That's looking nice and clean on the ground. All right, and the hot side, nice and clean. And if you've noticed, we haven't actually had to run anything through the holding tanks yet. Again, we're trying to minimize how much We've actually got in those holding tanks, um, so we're not transporting down the road with 15 gallons of water in the holding tanks. So, let's go inside and play with those. So this is our next step. Again, we have a valve that we can either be on hot or cold. I wanna make sure it's one way. Uh, I don't care which one you start with. We're gonna open it up. We've got the nice pink Slimer slime coming out of the faucet. We're going to see that change colors. Now, what I like to do with this one, I can rotate it and I can make sure that I got all these little foamy bubbles out of there as it goes, because that's what we're looking for. It's those nice little foam bubbles to be gone and I can switch it back and forth as it goes down the drain. All right, so that one's done. We got hot done. Now we flip over to cold, back to pink slime or slime. That's all right. That's what we want to see because we're clearing each side of the line. All right, that one's looking like it's almost done. The second one shouldn't take as long, but sometimes it does. So that's done. Now we're gonna move to, well, I gotta be in camera. Now we're gonna move to the bathroom. We're gonna do everything in there. All right, so I'm hoping this comes out all right. I can pretty much only use the forward facing camera uh, on this setup. But what we're gonna do in the bathroom is the same thing. Starting with the faucet, that's just the way I'm doing it for the video. You can do it in any order. Got nice clean water coming out of there. If you notice this going a lot faster now, that's because we got the majority of it out outside. Second run was the shower, third run was the sink. So this is all going quick. Now the next thing, let's see if I'm able to angle this. 
you guys are awesome for being patient during all this stuff. I appreciate. We're just trying to get the videos out as best as possible. We're gonna run the toilet. Wow, quick, nice, clean water there. Push that down. Make sure we're all clean. A little residue yet. One more time down, and we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna to try to reposition the cam. I'm gonna to try to reposition the camera and get the shower. It's like doing yoga on YouTube. Ugh. Leaning Junior. Seriously, if any of you guys are chiropractors, I will take a visit after this. All right. Wow, that was fast. Almost gone with that side. Now let's flip the other. Nice and easy. Now, the one thing we're gonna to have to do, shower head. We're gonna to have to angle the shower head. Boom. Boom. Good to go. All right. Hang all that back up. Now we're going to talk about the hot water heater and hopefully I'm not going to be in as many yoga pants. Man, I, I don't know about all this. I got to get a camera guy quickly. So we got our hot water heater here. We're going to put this plug on it. Okay, we're going to start it by hand. Now this is a 1 and 1 16th socket. We're going to start it by hand. This is our low point drain. Now, some of you guys are going to have a different hot water heater that's going to have an anoid rod, and that's fine. You're still going to want to insert that because we're going to be filling our hot water heater at this point. So, that is going to be our next step. And you don't want to over tighten this thing, but you want to make sure it's snug. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the tools out here. So, when I go inside and I turn the valves on to start filling this hot water heater, I make sure that I uh, got a good connection there and it's not leaking. Now the question I often get whenever we talk about winterizing, dewinterizing, any of those processes is how do I find my hot water heater, the plugs on the back side of it? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come outside. I got my hot water heater right here. Well, what else is near here? That's what I gotta figure out. Okay, well the outside kitchen's here so I know the bunks are directly over top of that. Plus, I got a little window off to the side. So, my hot water heater being right there, I need to go somewhere around those bunk areas. There's gotta be a panel for me to get to. So let's go inside and find that. So, hey Eric. So I found a panel. Here's my bunks, just like I was looking for. It's got a couple exposed screws on the front. None of the other panels around this area have them. It's, in front of the, it's behind the window. Yeah, I think this might be the panel we're looking for. Let's grab a number two square tip Let's grab a screw gun. Let's get this apart and find out. All right, so this is the backside of our hot water heater. Now, one thing to talk about uh, about the last step. If you have an anoid rod, yeah, see, look, the finger's on there and it comes in clear and then the rest doesn't. Okay, all joking aside. All right, um, if you have an anoid rod, it is gonna be a different size socket on there. Um, usually that's 15 sixteenths, um, but obviously check, uh, before you start buying tools that you don't need. So on the back side of the hot water heater, got a couple of things going on here. First off, we've got this funky hose going on here. This is to the water pump, okay? We don't need that right now. What we need is this guy. On the back side of the hot water heater, there's two valves. What that's allowing me to do is lets the cold water into the hot water heater, then lets the hot water go and fill the line. So once this tank gets full, then we're going to have this line pressurized. Now, remember I said we gotta go check outside and see if we, we gotta go check outside and see if this thing is leaking. Um, and then we'll come back in here, make sure we got water flowing to all the faucets. So, there's no dripping going on on our drain for our hot water heater plug right there. That is snug, I can't loosen it by hand, which is good. Now on all the, pro all the hot water heaters, there's gonna be this brass valve here with a little, connection. Once you get it full, it's going to go ahead and leak out water. And that's how we know all the water has filled that hot water heater. Now, the one thing to talk about is normally when you're filling this, if you hit that before it's full, you'll hear a little rush of air. That's perfectly fine. 
Just wait till you get a little bit of water, just like that, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and button this guy up. Boom, let's go inside and talk about the rest. Coachman. All right, so I said we weren't gonna talk about these valves right now. Again, this is my water pump coming down to here. Now, depending on the floor plan, it may be laid out slightly different. This one's kind of cool because it's all in one location. So let's talk about what a ball valve is, okay? This is a ball valve. Give you a quick little plumbing piece here. See the direction of the valve or, or the handle? That's the direction the valve is inside of here. So this is allowing flow through this area. That's because this unit was just winterized. And if you notice over here, it's pointed the opposite way. So it's preventing flow. What that's doing is stopping it from pulling from the fresh water tank and allowing it to draw from the quick winterization hose. So what we do is we're gonna reverse that now because we may go dry camping and we may need that piece. Now let's go to the next step of getting the hot water through the lines because we got water flowing through the lines, but not hot water yet and I'll explain Back here to where second. we started almost. So we're in here at this hot water faucet or at the kitchen faucet. And see, I didn't want to try to explain it over there because my beautiful face wasn't on camera. I know that's why like 95% of you tune in. It's not that I'm actually trying to give you like some decent information. It's just the Batman hat, the whole junior thing. I know that's why you're watching. So now it's time to, de to finish this dewinterizing. What I want to do, remember we could have had some air in that line when we were filling that hot water heater tank. I want to, and you can see, there it is. So I'm going to burp it out slow. And what that's from is when we unbypassed the hot water heater, there was a little bit of air in there. I've got the valve open right now and we still don't have much flow. There we go. I can hear it trying. And if you go full blast, you're going to wind up splashing everything in mama's camper. So don't do that. Nice, good clean flow. Now the last thing I'll do is I'm gonna walk around, hit a couple of the other faucets. Let's try to get this angled for the bathroom real quick. We're gonna try to do this all in one shot. All right, you'll be able to see that a little bit. Well, maybe not now that I knocked her. No air in there, so we're good to go. All right, so. We'll recap here in a second. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned how to dewinterize. Okay, so let's go over those steps real quick. Just sum it all up. Connect city water to your camper. Start with your low point drains. Again, we're doing that to prevent our holding tanks from filling up rapidly, okay? Because we're running a lot of water. So we started with the low point drains, cracking the cold and the hot open, allowing everything to run out. Then with the outdoor shower, again, we're getting the majority of that antifreeze out using you know the ground as our capture point um then we came inside did the city did the kitchen faucet did the bathroom sink the toilet and the shower now it doesn't really matter what you know how you do it in that process just as long as they're all get done if you have an outside kitchen make sure you do that as well once we were sure that we had all the antifreeze out of the system then we unbypassed the hot water heater the reason for that is I don't want any of that antifreeze getting on the inside of that holding tank. That's why I don't recommend winterizing using the freshwater holding tank. That's why I always like having that hot water heater bypass before I introduce antifreeze into the system, trying to prevent any antifreeze from getting inside that holding tank. So we bypass, we unbypass that once we were sure we had the cap on the outside of the hot water heater, unbypassed it, um, and then allowed everything to fill went outside, checked our connections, made sure that we had a good solid connection on that low point drain on that hot water heater, and then made sure that we have water flowing out of the pressure relief valve indicating the tank was full. Then we came back inside and we went ahead and burped the remaining air that would have been in the lines created when we unbypassed the hot water heater. Did that on a couple of faucets, the kitchen, we got the majority of it out, and then the bathroom we finished everything up on. It was good to go. So now we're dewinterized, all we got to do is put our panel back on and go camping. So the next question I know is going to be, great, how do I winterize? We're going to put a separate video up from that. Guys, comment down below. 
I'm going to start trying to link some of the stuff that I've been using. Um, a lot of our customers are asking, hey, where do I get this? Where do I get that? So I'm going to try to start linking some stuff on Amazon. Um, I'm going to try to put something together there. Me and Eric are in discussions on how the best way to do that is, but we'll figure something out. Regardless, we'll go ahead and get those links to you guys um, as you need them. Request what you want, and I'll get them up as fast as possible. Thank you so much for commenting. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Do all that stuff. Help us out. Don't forget, uh, 100,000, that's our goal, 100,000 viewers subscribe to our channel. So we got to get some more content out. Um, and I think we actually might be doing a little bit of a road trip video tomorrow. Um, but we'll talk more about that. Um, and uh, there might be a Junior's uh, 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 vlog coming up. Let me know if that would be something that would be interesting to you guys. Have a great day. Thank you, Katanica Jacket, for making it actually warm today. I really appreciate it.